This segment of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. Cautious optimism from the Minister of Finance in the face of positive news on the economic front. But as Leah Cooper tells us in this report, despite the inroads, officials are holding off on celebrating. The economy's growing and expanding. Pretty assuring words from the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Peter Turnquist, who says the country's successfully reduced its deficit over $130 million within the first nine months. This compared to how the numbers stacked up during the same period last year. He accepts, though, that the Bahamas is not in the clear just yet. We have not reached our goal yet. Obviously, you have to wait for the full year, uh, but we are certainly tracking in the right direction. Um, we are uh, at least 51% down on um, deficit year over year, uh, which is a very positive sign. Uh, we continue to be uh, very cautious uh, about making any uh, um, you know, uh, bold statements in this regard because, again, uh, we still have three months to go. Uh, and uh, as you know, uh, anything can happen. Um, and even as we go into towards the, the hurricane season, anything can happen. The period under review also recorded a 15% revenue increase of $218.7 million. There is, however, still the need for fiscal restraint if critical fiscal targets are to be achieved. Uh, again, so we, we don't end up uh, with the kind of runaway spending that we've done in the past. Just last week, you would have heard uh, in the House where the comment was made, put some money on the ground. Um, and, and, you know, that may sound cliche and, and, and uh, uh, may, may um, appeal to, to some people, but that is a very reckless statement uh, because it is, again, uh, even if you think about it from a personal perspective, it is encouraging uh, recklessness, uh, a, a sense of uh, uh, slackness, if you will. Um, nobody should put money on the ground unless you have a reason, unless there's something that um, you're, you're hope, an objective you're hoping to achieve. Expenditures, meantime, increased by $86.5 million, or 5%. This due to a $143.3 million increase in recurrent expenditure and a $56.8 million decrease in capital expenditure. Figures show that value-added tax collections during the third quarter helped fuel a turnaround from a $7 million deficit from last year's third quarter. According to the Ministry of Finance, the transition from VAT on realty transactions to stamp tax on realty transactions led to an approximately two-fold increase from $80.6 million a year ago to $161.6 million. Non-tax revenues, which totaled $167.3 million, also surpassed the third quarter budget mark with a gain of $20.7 million compared to the last review period. Immigration fees were also compared to the last review period. Reporting for JCN News, I'm Leah Cooper. In fact, Progressive Liberal Party Deputy Chester Cooper is instead scolding the Minnesota administration for, despite having raised value-added tax by 60%, falling short of its forecast collection by hundreds of millions of dollars, a failure he deemed of epic proportions. The Minister of Finance knows full well, he said, that there is no windfall expected in the last few months of the budget year that will get the government close to the target amount. A clear sign that the government botched the rollout of the VAT increase and other taxes due to poor modeling, poor implementation, a lack of consultation, and politically motivated exemptions. From the labor scene this evening, true to his word, Labor Minister Dion Folks has signed off on strike certificates for both the line staff and managerial unions of the Warren and Sewage Corporation, giving the two the green light to take such action if necessary. This amid ongoing tension with WSC executives. I had discussions with the Attorney General's office, also with the Director of Labor, and also with the executive chairman of Water and Sewage Corporation um, to come to a determination. And we thought that that was the right thing to do. Now, despite having the paperwork in hand, the minister is hoping that the unions do not rush to action. I want to encourage both sides to please sit down and talk, to give a little bit and see if you can reach a resolution to the issues um, on both sides. Um, the supply of water is a necessity to the residents of the Bahamas, here in New Providence and the Family Islands, and the government is very concerned, the Prime Minister is very concerned about the, the consistency of the supply of water to all the residents. So we really wish to impress upon both sides. There has been an improvement in the relationship between the unions and management and the board, 
and um, we'd like to see that relationship um, um, develop um, into, in, into a very friendly relationship where both sides can reach an amicable conclusion. Well, despite having a strike certificate in hand, WSC Union presidents say they're actually looking forward to a speedy resolution to the three outstanding matters behind the ongoing friction. These include the failure of WSC to adhere to the promotional procedures and two unorthodox promotional listings. The second, WSC's failure to post an organizational chart indicating which positions within the company are filled and those that aren't. And third, the breach of Article 1301. Now, if you're wondering the likelihood of the unions exercising their right to strike, Bahamas Utilities and Allied Workers Union President Dwayne Wood said that's up to the corporation. We are here. And we are here. Extending the olive branch, although they may say we don't or we, do, we are disingenuous, we want them to know that we are extending the olive branch from the depths of our heart, but we have problems. And you can't expect us to extend the olive branch today and then you create another bone of contention tomorrow and then you make it look like the union is the villain. So we are here extending that olive branch and we want a resolution for both unions. That's why we stand in solidarity. So we say, solve the issues of both unions so that we don't have to use the certificate. When asked if there is a particular timeline for this to take place, here's the answer reporters got. Well, I, I must say that the corporation in all of its wisdom has already, has already sent an invite. So we look forward to going to that invite and coming out optimistically. We go to that meeting to come out with resolution. As for whether the union's relationship has improved with management? We are here extending the olive branch, although they may say we don't or we, do, we are disingenuous. We want them to know that we are extending the olive branch from the depths of our heart. But we have problems and you can't expect us to extend the olive branch today and then you create another bone of contention tomorrow and then you make it look like the union is the villain. So we are here extending that olive branch and we want resolution for both unions. That's why we stand in solidarity. So we say solve the issues of both unions so that we don't have to use the certificate. According to WSC Management Union President Edno Roll, the corporation's chairman is supportive of their concerns. A check on weather is up next. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.